On the 20th of August, 1912, William Booth, God's soldier, laid down his sword. He lay in state in the Congress Hall, London. Thousands came to pay tribute. For the last time, he leaves the army headquarters in Queen Victoria Street. Through the streets of London, his funeral procession passed through the city of which he was freeman. The flags of nations invaded by the army were carried proudly at the head of the column. The whole traffic of this metropolis was arrested by one of the densest multitudes that ever thronged its thoroughfares. As the carriage passed the mansion house, the Lord Mayor of London saluted the coffin. Ten thousand men and women from the ranks of the Salvation Army, specially selected to represent their comrades, walked behind their promoted leader, who had taught them to give their lives ministering to the poorest, the lowliest, and the lost. The world recognized that with the passing of this man, one of its great fighters had passed away. Messages of sympathy rained in from every quarter of the globe. Every newspaper of any consequence paid its tribute. No man ever finished his Earth's battle with so universal a triumph. passed to his burial in Abney Park Cemetery in London. The vast crowd that witnessed the end of his last journey was symbolic of a mightier host. For in the shelters of the army he had founded, thousands of homeless men were finding refuge. In his homes, thousands of women saved from the uttermost ruin were mourning his loss. In every continent, many there were telling each other sorrowfully that the father who had sought them out and rescued them had passed from the world. And in countries as ancient as China and as new as America, tens of thousands were speaking of him as the man who had brought them comfort and strength. And so William Booth was laid to rest. But it is the way of salvationists to see triumph in death, to see it as promotion to a greater glory. And so his son, Bramwell, turns to the great crowd and leads them in singing, Servant of God, well done.